I remember a few years ago, I was so obsessed with becoming a New York lawyer after watching a few episodes of The Suits. However, coming from a not very wealthy background and also not being able to study in the US, I realized that that was probably a dream that could never be fulfilled in my life. Good news is today, I'm already a New York lawyer. So in this video, I wanna show you the reality of the process you need to go through in order to become a New York attorney. So long story short, I spent a year and two months to complete all the required procedures. This is probably the fastest you can do it if you are a foreigner like me. It involves a lot of time and also money. Enrolling in a bar preparation course probably costs you from around 3,000 pounds to 7,000 pounds. With examination fees and also accommodation fees and flight tickets to New York, it could cost you a lot of money. So the first step to qualifying as a New York lawyer is the question of eligibility. Even though you have never studied in the US, you can potentially still sit the New York bar exam. Tracing back to January 2019. So at that time, I started researching the possibility of taking the New York bar exam as a foreigner. If you study in any common law country and that course lasts for about three years, you will very likely be able to sit for the New York bar exam without taking any additional LLM or, or courses in the USA. Vice versa, maybe you have a law degree in a civil law country, then there's a possibility that you need to undertake further LLM degree in the USA so that you can be eligible to take the New York bar after that degree. You can only get a definite answer by submitting some relevant documents to the New York authority. And this is a process that everyone should go through. So you need to submit an online request for the foreign evaluation of academic qualification. And next, you need to ask your previous law school to do two things for you. First of all, your university need to send to the New York authority directly your academic transcript. Next. And this is a step that troubles a lot of people. Ask your law school or law faculty to draft a letter certifying that you satisfy the academic stage of your legal study. So ideally, that letter should include the fact that you already graduated from your law school with certain number of class hours. And also, you have already completed the educational stage of the legal training in your relevant jurisdiction. I will also share with you a sample a sample uh, draft letter used by my law school to certify that I'm eligible to take the bar exam. So fast forward five weeks after I submitted this online request. In February 2019, I was determined uh, to be eligible to sit for the New York bar exam. First question is how many exams do you actually need to take? A short answer is that you need to take three examinations in order to become a New York qualified lawyer. First one is the most important one called the UBE, the Uniform Bar Examination. This is also what everyone calls the New York State Bar Examination and the one that you need to prepare for the most. So the UBE takes place two times a year, usually February and July. And the UBE consists of three different components. Firstly, you need to do the MBE, which is the multi-state bar examination. In this examination, you need to answer 200 multiple choice questions uh, within six hours. And those questions basically consist of 50% of the entire bar examination. Second of all, you need to do the MPT, what we call the multi-state uh, performance test. Basically, you need to answer two skills related question covering legal analysis, factual analysis, and problem solving within three hours. And these questions account for 20% of your total New York bar score. Thirdly, you also need to take the MEE, the multi-state essay examination. Basically, you need to answer six essay questions in three hours and that accounts for 30% of your total bar score. To pass the New York bar exam, you need to attain uh, a point of 266 on a 400 point scale. The second exam you need to take is the multi-state professional responsibility examination, also what we call the MPLE. Basically, it's a two hour examination covering topics relating to the lawyer's ethical standards 
and also professional rules governing the legal profession and you need to do 60 multiple choice questions. The examination happens three times a year, March, August and November. And the passing score for MPRE in New York is 85 on a 150 point scale. Basically, it's about 56%. The third exam is also the final exams you need to do in order to become a New York lawyer is the New York law examination. It may sound a little bit weird for you because New York law exam, New York bar exam, they all sound like the same thing, but they're not. New York law exam is a way easier examination. Basically, you need to do a number of law courses specific to the New York law online and the authority will give you the relevant course materials, natural notes to study for that particular examination. And after doing all those online courses, you can uh, register for an online New York law examination. So basically, you don't need to be physically in New York in order to take the New York law examination. And it's also an open book examination. You don't even need to use any other extra or external sources to prepare for this exam and you will be able to pass the New York law examination by answering 30 questions out of 50 questions correctly. It's actually a relatively easy examination. Later on in March and April 2019, I flew back to Hong Kong to apply for a tourist visa because you need a visa to go to the US to take the bar exam. So you may also need to do that uh, months in advance. The process was relatively straightforward. I just uh, submit application for visa appointment. The officer basically interviewed me for less than two minutes and I told them that I want to go to the US to take the bar exam. So after getting my tourist visa, uh, I flew back to London again to prepare for the New York bar exam. I use materials based on Barbary. If you're interested, definitely check out a video I made regarding the entire game plan I had and how I study them uh, within three months. I spent around six to 10 hours a day in the first few months. And in the last month, I basically spent 12 to 14 hours a day to study because I would say the intensity of studying for the bar exam is even more important than uh, spending a long period of time. The crazy part about a bar exam is that there are just way so many things you need to memorize. So the most effective way of studying them is actually to repetitively revise different subjects so that you won't forget a specific subject that easily. Basically, I divided my study schedule into three parts. First month, I basically familiarize myself with all the 14 subjects, uh, contract law, constitution law, criminal procedure, civil procedure, etc. The second month, I basically started um, uh, attending past papers using those concepts. So from time to time, I would do maybe four or five multiple choice questions in one specific subtopic of a legal subject to test my understanding. And the final month, I basically do over 1,500 multiple choice questions for the UBE. And I also practice up to 50 uh, essay questions for the MDE. Every day when I woke up, I basically just need to attempt past paper questions. Like the amount of information I need to absorb every day, it's ridiculous. However, I would say it's also a very effective way of doing it. Imagine you can just pass an examination and become a lawyer by studying for three months in your life. I highly recommend you guys to have a really well-planned schedule so that you know exactly what you're going to do every day. And when you complete those subtasks, every day, you will feel very satisfied. I remember two to three weeks before my actual examination, my score for the UBE is still pretty poor because I always get only 60 something percent uh, overall for the multiple choice questions. I feel really demotivated. But at the end, in the actual bar examination, I did it pretty well. I got over 300 marks uh, out of 400, which is definitely top over top 80% of the candidates. So after studying for three to four months, I was kind of ready. I bought my flight ticket to New York City. My first time to New York, Woo! I, I was like more nervous than excited to be honest because I've done so much. I gotta pass that damn examination, otherwise I've wasted a lot of money and time. On the plane, I was studying for the bar exam and the guy next to me was like, what the hell are you doing? Why are you just like studying on the plane? It's once in a lifetime opportunity for me to become a New York lawyer. Just don't judge me. Traveling in New York alone is hell of an experience. First of all, Manhattan is super expensive. I remember when I checked the Airbnb, 
I could literally find no place I could stay. So Anna, I actually rent an Airbnb, a very cheap one in New Jersey, pretty close to New York. And I remember I actually arrived in New York a week before because I need to deal with the jet lag as well. I need to familiarize myself with the examination venue as well because I've never been to the New York City. I need to check the route to the examination hall uh, like two days before so that I can ensure that on that day, I can actually get there by myself. The examination are really early in the morning and they even require you to attend maybe two, three hours in advance for checking and also for security reasons. So I basically woke up at like 5 a.m. in the morning in New Jersey and then I took that earliest bus you can find in the morning and then to New York City. I remember I just grabbed a bagel and then just uh, walked to the examination hall. There's no time for me to waste. In that week before the actual examination, I tried to attempt 100 multiple choice questions in three hours, which is what is going to happen in the actual examination. I still didn't manage to get the score I want, like 80% or like uh, high 70%. However, I have done whatever I could at that time. When I first arrived at the examination hall, it was a bit daunting to be honest, because like 10,000 people, you know, standing in front of the queue to wait for the bar examination. That's crazy. So on the 30th of July, uh, I first attempted the MPT in the morning from 9.30 to 12.30. Uh, and, I, and I attempted the MDE uh, from 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. And I remember the lunch break is was also kind of hectic because uh, you probably couldn't get any decent food during that time because the examination hall is like the middle of nowhere. The bar exam authority was actually pretty good because they offered you a quick sandwich deal or something so that you order in advance of the examination. I remember I probably ordered it a week or two weeks before the actual examination so that I was guaranteed a meal. You just have no time to waste even though maybe in the morning when I did the MPT I felt like oh sh I, I did pretty badly. But you have no time to think about it because you need to prepare right away for the MPE in the afternoon. And the second day, uh, three hours of uh, MBE examination, three hours of another uh, MBE examination in the afternoon. I remember when I left the examination hall, I just felt so relieved because you constantly change the subject matters. For example, the MBE, you have seven subjects. Every multiple choice question is a very tricky way of testing you a specific part. The bar exam has got everything out of my brain. Next, I also want to tell you how I actually significantly shortened my time uh, to qualify as a New York lawyer. Usually people tend to fly to New York twice to first take the New York bar exam and then take the MPLE examination. However, I basically combined these two together and finished them in my one journey. There is this session for MPLE in August and my bar examination is in July. I stayed for two more weeks in order to complete the MPLE. And I didn't really spend a lot of time on that before my New York bar exam because I felt like two weeks should be enough for me to really study for the MPLE. In the past, of course, I read some of the lecture notes and the Barbie materials on the MPLE, but I never really practiced any questions until after my New York bar exam. So that after that, I also probably attempt like uh, two or three sets of past paper questions on MPLE. I actually did pretty well as well. So I recommend you to use this strategy just to take the MPLE after the bar examination. That being said, I also have some fun time there. I tried the $1 pizza. I also went to the Madison Square Garden because I love MBA as well. And Manhattan is just an amazing city. I stayed in New York City for almost a month and I cleared the uh, UBE and also the MPLE. What was left for me uh, would be the New York law examination I talked about earlier. In mid-August 2019, I uh, flew back to London and I started preparing for the New York law examination. I enrolled in the New York law course. I basically spent hours of time to uh, go through those online courses. That was probably the easiest exam. It is an open book examination as well. So I completed the New York Law course on the 26th of August, 2019. And I also registered for the New York Law examination on the 26th of September, 2019 as well. Uh, you can also check out here regarding all the dates and registration period for the New York Law examination. So next, it came to the time when I found out I actually passed all three examinations. 
I remember that was the day when I was paralegaling at a law firm. It was a lunch break. I was having my sandwich uh, in the canteen and suddenly I received an email from a random email address. So I just didn't even know what it was until I opened that email and then I saw an attached document about my bar examination. I was freaking out. I was like, what? It was so sudden. Because the worst part is they didn't even tell you the exact day the bar exam results were going to release. I remember I did a lot of online search, the prediction on which particular day uh, the results will be released. But in the US, each state actually has a different release date for the examination. For New York, usually it really takes two to three months. But I was really glad that I found out I passed the New York bar exam. I was also told in the email that I was admitted to the third appellant division of the Supreme Court. And that is usually the division where foreign educated candidates are admitted as a New York attorney. But the story was not ended just yet because there's one final hurdle I need to pass, which is the 50 hour pro bono work requirement. Basically, if you want to be a New York lawyer, you need to satisfy what we call the 50 hours of pro bono work. It can be done in jurisdiction other than the US, but you need to find an appropriate organizational firm or a lawyer who supervises you to do the relevant work, help you fill in an affidavit uh, regarding your pro bono experiences. I know that in the UK, some students actually have opportunity to participate in the legal advice centers at their universities. And I think those experiences could potentially qualify as pro bono work. However, for me back in Hong Kong, it wasn't a thing and I couldn't really get any pro bono uh, experiences and I remember I find out online that there was this uh, bar prep uh, provider giving pro bono work experiences to students I think they charge up to three thousand pounds or four thousand pounds and I didn't want to pay to have a work experience so as a last resort I turned to my law firm during my bar examination preparation I was also lucky enough to secure a training contract in London uh, at a US law firm. Uh, November 2019 to March 2020, I worked for the pro bono department at my firm. In addition to the pro bono requirement, I also noticed that there is this uh, skill requirement law graduate may need to fulfill. However, I personally was not a recent graduate, so I was not required to fulfill that skill requirement. So for the purpose of this video, I wouldn't talk about it. I finally came to the stage where I need to submit the paperwork necessary for my admission. The whole process was so time consuming. If you can check out the uh, bar examination website, you can see a list of forms you need to fill in in order to qualify as a New York attorney. So I will basically deal with them one by one. First of all, the application form, that was the key document you need to submit in order to qualify as a New York attorney. Basically, it's a document consisting of 20 pages asking every single details. The next thing I want to mention is the legal employment affidavit. That was the hardest thing for me to get as a foreigner. And basically, you need to list every single legal employment from the age of 21 or in the past 10 years, whichever is shorter. I have work experiences in Hong Kong, UK, Italy. It's almost impossible for me to ask those former employers to give me evidence of my work because it has been maybe four or five years ago. So one solution I had is I tried to draft my own affidavit. So the bar examiner would consider that if you have tried every single reasonable steps to obtain those affidavit, but you failed to do so, you also need to notarize those affidavits. This was also a difficult part for me because I didn't know a lawyer who could help me do that. Google it and uh, just find a lottery public. I went to their office and I provided the affidavit I draft for myself and also the application form and all other legal uh, employment related affidavits uh, completed by my employers. I just gave them to that lawyer and he helped me notarize uh, all those documents. And the price really varies as well, ranging from 20 pounds to 50 pounds per document. That is how expensive. And I remember because there are just so many documents, uh, the lawyer actually gave me a discount, like 10 pounds per document. And next, you also need to complete two moral character affidavits. So there is often this question of whether we need to find someone like a lawyer, a judge to help you do this affidavit. It's actually not necessary at all. For me, I literally found my friend back in Hong Kong. He is a nurse. He has known me for over 10 years now so that he could certify my good moral character. 
Another person I found uh, to help me do this work is uh, a current trainee solicitor at a Hong Kong law firm and he has known me since law school so that he is also in a good position to comment on my good moral character. Basically, I submitted everything in April 2020. They will send you an email after all the application process and tell you a specific date which will be the earliest available date for you to uh, attend a swear-in ceremony to be a New York attorney. Additionally, you need to pay an attorney registration fee, $375. You also need to submit a completed uh, attorney admission verification statement uh, and mail it to the admission office. And after they receive that statement, your admission will take effect and you will be called a New York qualified lawyer. Those are all the things I did in order to qualify as a New York attorney, as a foreigner. It takes time, it takes money, it takes courage to do all those things. If you're really determined to become a New York attorney, try to start researching the process, find the right material to study and plan your schedule. If you enjoyed this video, uh, subscribe to my channel. I will keep making content even though I start working next month as a trainee solicitor because I really hope that this channel could be a one-stop shop for you guys, especially for those who want an international career. What I give you guys uh, information and resources, whether you can achieve it, it really depends on you. So follow me on Instagram or uh, LinkedIn as well. You can DM me uh, your questions. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and See you guys again next Sunday.